Hello. Hi guys, so I haven't even introduced um, the vlog yet. I'm here at the Curzon in Soho with Mumsy, my special guest for this vlog. And we are watching the premiere of George Galloway's um, Tony Blair documentary. And um, we've already sitting inside, Mum's already in. But I've decided that it's totally fine and not inappropriate to watch this documentary with popcorn. So I'm just going to grab some popcorn and uh, go meet Mum inside. The polity is concerned. Rupert Murdoch was the devil in, in, in that to come to an accommodation with him meant sacrificing all the principles that the Labour Party stood for. The Labour Party I had joined as a 13-year-old was, as it says on the tin, a party of the working class. It prided itself on its internal democracy, with members having the right to vote on policy but under the banner of what they called New Labour and I called Non-Labour, Blair and his clique began to steer the party into the eager embrace of Thatcherism, dragging a left-wing party into the footsteps of the Iron Lady would require an iron fist. He said, sir, we're gonna attack Iraq. I said, well, did they tie Saddam to 9-11? He said, uh, no. I walked out of there pretty upset and then we attacked Afghanistan. And then I came back to the Pentagon about six weeks later, I saw the same officer, I said, why, uh, why haven't we attacked Iraq? We still gonna attack Iraq? He said, oh, sir, he says, it's worse than that. He said, we're gonna attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're gonna start with Iraq and then we're gonna move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. So why this interest in dominating the Middle East? And why was Iraq at the top of the list? I think it was primarily for oil, not just the oil of Iraq, but uh, establishing a base in the, at the heart of the main energy producing region of the world. <laughs> the Iraq war, he was then paid six million dollars every year and still is from J.P. Morgan six months after he left office. The man is a war criminal. It's a brilliant film, uh, uh, George, and I know everybody's made huge sacrifices to get this here today and I hope it gets the audiences it deserves and the exposure it deserves. So just a quick thing to, tonight that I'd like to say. I thought it was burning to say it because it's, it's a theme of the film, but there's another theme beyond, you know, the millions that have been made by Blair and the destruction of the Labour Party effectively and the destruction of peace in the Middle East. But really, for me as a lawyer, the, the one message I'd like to leave you with is really, I, I hold Blair responsible, particularly responsible for effectively the denigration of the concept which many of us have fought for for many years. It's called the rule of law. It now means nothing. He has undermined that to such an extent that do people care about it anywhere in the world? They're just saying, well, he did it. And effectively, he set an example for people throughout the world that actually you can ignore it. It doesn't matter. Just carry on. And if you make money out of it, that's even better. And that's the legacy as far as I'm concerned. Now, somebody might want to ask the question, well, why can't we prosecute him? Well, I was amongst a number of lawyers at the time who went to The Hague. The problem about it is, yes, it's an unlawful war, but the, uh, the offence internationally of aggression has not been agreed. And one of the people objecting to it was, of course, America, because they'd end up in the dock as aggressors. So that's never gone on to the statute books. It's agreed as an offence, but you can't prosecute it. What's left is the war crimes to do with, well, white phosphorus, you saw that, and also cluster bombs are not mentioned in here, but basically all the other weapons that were used, never mind the torture and rendition and so on, so many of it, there's a great deal that could be prosecuted.
Look, it would be so easy for any right-wing media person to look in there tonight and say, yeah, 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 you know, left-wing bullshit, shut up, here we go, it's the same old crap again. I'm an actor. Um, I get paid to do it. Uh, I'm also a part-time musician. I get paid to do that. So I have a vested interest in having a look at Tony Blair's life. He is both a failed actor and a failed musician. <laughs> so he went into politics. Now, I know that that man needed to be loved. He needed to be revered. Now, if you think, as a result of watching that film, that you're not going to get a case brought against him, then I'd, I'd like you to consider this. As a dyed-in-the-wool narcissist, Tony Blair is a dead man walking. He has no legacy. <laughs> he is morally bankrupt. So we can actually enjoy his downfall. Of course, of course Tony Blair is not a war criminal, as Michael Mansfield, <laughs> even Michael Mansfield, had to concede. He said he was guilty of war crimes. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. did. Uh, white John phosphorus did. and depleted yeah. uranium. It's, okay, look, look, look. I really want this to be conducted in a, a kind of grown-up manner. Now, John. Why? Look. Why? No, no, you you can... get off the stage, you fool. Please. No, no, look, I'm, I have to let John talk, all right? Why? Please explain yourself, John. Why? Well, because I, I think it's important. No, 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 Okay, my friend. Okay, no, listen. My friend. No, 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 not your friend. The days for reasonable conversation to hear this nonsense are over. Yeah, I want to hear what he's got to say, and then I want to hear you argue against it, okay? That's what I want to hear. What you're doing is dividing and ruling. Now shut the fuck up, John. Come on, let him talk. The Iraq War was a legal war. It was backed by United Nations Security Council Resolution. It was the 17th United Nations Security Council Resolution in regards to Saddam Hussein and weapons inspections. The war was on behalf of the United Nations. It was not in defiance of the United Nations. There is not a war crime uh, committed. There's not a war crime for Tony Blair to answer. He is not a war criminal. Uh, Michael Mansfield admitted that before he yeah. went yeah. off. He did admit yeah. that. Mike, neither Michael Mansfield nor anybody in this audience is a judge and jury on the issue of war crimes as an international criminal court for that purpose. And there's no there's no point there's no point in getting upset with me about the fact that Tony Blair is not a war criminal. It's your problem. It's your problem if you want to believe that. And it's a democracy you believe what you want. He's not a war criminal. First I'll let John speak please say that we should respect the courage of John McTurnan in coming here tonight to face this audience after that film. I'm going to disagree with everything that John said, uh, but it's important that we don't behave like the Blairites. Yeah. Or running out of town anyone with a dissident opinion. So let's be respectful, especially towards the one person on the panel who doesn't agree with most of us. Yeah. I hope that you found the film a powerful document. I believe that it's uh, important in every uh, regard. The bereaved families of British servicemen and women who were uh, killed or maimed in the conflict are bringing court cases against Tony Blair. So he's going to see a lot of the inside of courtrooms over the next period. And that is part of the exercise of holding him to account. But it's only part. Uh, Keith Allen is right. In the court of public opinion, I think that Tony Blair is overwhelmingly condemned by people. Whether or not Tony Blair is a war criminal reminded me of a conversation I had in a foreign office. Um, I've been complaining about our using intelligence hot from torture, from the torture chambers of the Kalimov regime, where people were boiled alive, where people were electrocuted, where people were raped with open bottles. Um, and I was called back to a meeting in the Foreign Office, 
And there the Foreign Office's Chief Legal Advisor, Sir Michael Wood, told me it wasn't illegal for us to get the intelligence from torture, provided that we didn't specifically request that the individual be tortured. Um, and Michael, who I knew, who I'd known for many years, I just looked at him and I said, Michael, for fuck's sake, you're talking about people being boiled alive and you're coming up with a legal nicety about did we actually ask for him specifically to be tortured or did we just get the intelligence resulting from it without specifically asking him a question. When it comes to people, to children, hundreds of thousands of children dying horrible, violent deaths as a result of this man's action, the idea that you can parse a nicety of law as to whether or not he can be tried in The Hague yeah. is irrelevant. Those children are dead and that man is evil. Yeah. Um, um. Say hi, Mumsy. So we just watched the film and the question and answer afterwards was a bit of a shambles. Good news. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it? Do you think? Well, it was really question and answer. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> so guys, the documentary is very terrible lighting. Hello, sorry. <laughs> so guys, the um, documentary is over. Uh, everyone is just chilling afterwards, there's George um, just speaking to some people and try and grab him Sunday, but I just for a quick comment oh hello, hi I thought I'd wave these people are very important they, they, they actually are delivering messages that the world needs now because we definitely need a different message don't we? What did you think of the documentary? Um, I think the documentary is really interesting. For me, it sort of put together lots of things I sort of knew, but to put them into a narrative, which I think is important, because that's how history is written, isn't it? Exactly. You know. so, powerful, powerful reminder to see it all together. I think it's, and it's refreshing to me to see two very important men in my world, at least. I read him every day, and I follow him often. I'm vlogging, how are you? I'm good, you're vlogging. vlogging. I'm, I'm vlogging now. Okay. Um, good documentary. Thank you. Um, what would you see, say to everyone, come down to see it, what's the main message? It's really important not to forget in life. The pace of events is such that it's easy for people to forget. So this document, documentary is of course a document, seeks to bring together the charge sheet, the indictment of Tony Blair. And I think it does it very well. And the audience seemed to agree. So before it passes into rewritten history, it's vital that we remind ourselves of just how many crimes Tony Blair is guilty of. Not just the obvious crimes against Iraq and against the Middle East, but against the British people and against his own party. British Labour Party too. It is a powerful indictment. He deserves to be held to account and punished for his wrongdoing, not just because it is the moral thing to do, to punish wrongdoing, but because if, if rulers don't get punished for wrongdoing, future rulers will think that wrongdoing is the right thing to do, especially when you can make a very big pile of money out of it. Okay, I know there's a queue behind me to so just quickly tell people where they can watch it. Well, uh, it's on uh, rolling out in mainly art house uh, cinemas uh, over the next few weeks in uh, London, in several places in London, but also in the north. I'm in Bradford on Monday, and then in uh, uh, Liverpool, and then in Edinburgh. So if you go to the blairdoc.com, you can find it. And then the DVD is out on the 15th of August and you can pre-order that now through Amazon. And later, after that, it will be on all the normal platforms, uh, Netflix and, uh, oh, Netflix and well. iTunes oh, and uh, all the normal uh, platforms. So hopefully next time I speak on my blog, I would have figured out how to use the self selfie stick better, George. I thought, I thought you did really well. <laughs> it's good seeing you. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> Hi guys, so I've just been editing um, a quick vlog I did at the premiere of George Galloway's um, Blair documentary 
that took place last night, so Wednesday night, and I just realised I hadn't actually done an outro. I actually didn't film as much as I thought I would in the end. Um, but anyway, I'm putting the, a quick video together and I just wanted to wrap up by saying that um, I would recommend people to go and watch this documentary. Now, in all honesty, there isn't any new information in the documentary. It's got some interesting interviews in there, um, though, particularly for me, um, the moment where I heard David Davis, who's now a government minister, saying that we created ISIS as a consequence of the Iraq war, that stuck in my mind. But really, whether you're somebody who has followed all the political ins and outs um, running up to the Iraq war, even if you do know all the facts, it's still really a sobering and devastating reminder to see it all together. Because the world is so fast changing now, fast paced, isn't it, that you almost forget. I mean, as I said, there was nothing in the documentary that I didn't already know, but it's almost like how quickly we forget. You know, all the all those things like the Abu Ghraib photos and um, the Blair's deals with Libya and realistically just how much money he is making even something like watching Robin Cook a snippet of Robin Cook's last statement in Parliament and getting emotional and everybody to this day in that cinema giving it around a, a, a large round of applause so even if you know all the facts it's still worth going to see documented there in the way that it has been and if you haven't I think it is a good informational educational piece of work so yeah um that is my take on it and um I'm gonna put this into the vlog right now on this editing system and upload it so um hope you guys have enjoyed listening to some of the Q&A and um George's comments and I shall see you soon